the first part of lesson 13.1, right triangle trigonometry. By definition, a right triangle is any triangle that has a right angle. And a right angle is an angle that forms 90 degrees. It says angles are labeled with a capital letter on the triangle. And you can see that on the outsides for each vertex, A, B, and C. Sides are labeled with lowercase letters like lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c. And the letter matches directly across the angle. For instance, angle a is directly across side a, angle b is directly across side b, and angle c, that right angle, is directly across side c. Okay? A way to compare side lengths in a right triangle is something called Pythagorean theorem. You may remember this formula from geometry. If you have two sides and you're trying to find the length of a missing third side, the template is always a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is always the hypotenuse and it's always on its own on that right-hand side. The hypotenuse is that diagonal side length opposite the 90 degree angle. It says for each triangle below, draw and label triangle ABC. We'll draw our picture similar to the one above. Then find the length of the missing side to the nearest tenth. Our first angle has, or our first picture has C as 90 degrees, lowercase a as 4, and lowercase b as 6. If we draw our triangle to kind of match the one up above, I'm not too worried about it, although that looks a little off right there. We've got angle A at the bottom, angle B at the top, and side C is that 90 degree angle. Lowercase a is 4, and lowercase b is 6. It says find the length of the missing side to the nearest tenth. Our missing side length is side c, the hypotenuse. If we apply Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the a and the b go on the left-hand side, we square them and add them together. We would get 4 squared plus Oh, whatever, b equals c. I meant b equals 6. Wow, I don't even know where that came from, you guys. That should be a 6 right there. All right, that was throwing me off. Okay, let's try that again. 4 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. If we square 4, we get 16. If we square thirty or 6, we get 36. Add them together, we get 52 equals c squared. Take the square root of each side, and c would equal the square root of 52, and that would be approximately 7.2. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. Over here for example B, again we're labeling angle C at 90 degrees, side B at 8, and now side C at 15. Create your right triangle to kind of match the template up above. Put your right angle in the corner, that's where C is located. A is over on the left, B is at the top. Lowercase b is 8, that'd be that bottom edge, that's an equals right there. And lowercase c, the hypotenuse, is 15. We would be looking for the measure of side A. Now if we apply a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the b and the c are on separate sides. We'll keep a squared as is for now. I'll plug in b and we'll square it. And then we'll plug in c, and we'll have to square that as well. a squared plus 8 squared is 64, and 15 squared is 225. To get a squared alone, before we square root, we're going to subtract 64 to the right. That gives us a squared equals 161. If we take the square root of each side, then a equals the exact square root of 161, if you plug that into your calculator, that's approximately 12.7. Notice our answer is smaller than C, which makes sense because the hypotenuse, again, is always the biggest side. Another way to compare sides in a right triangle is by looking at a specific angle location. We have a symbol inside the triangle that's like an O with a slash through it. That symbol is called theta, and it represents the location of your reference angle. And by reference angle, that's the angle where we label our opposite sides from. 
theta is always an acute measure, so we wouldn't use theta as that 90 degree location. For that triangle down below, instead of A, B, and C, I've labeled them as specific side lengths from my angle theta. Directly across is the side that's opposite theta. The side that connects it to the right angle is the adjacent side. And then the side opposite the right angle is always known as the hypotenuse. Now you can change the location for theta, but then the opposite and adjacent side may change as well. In that big box on the left are definitions that we can apply from the angle comparing the sides. So let's take a look at that in more detail. If you know a specific angle measure, SIN, COS, and TAN are three common trig values that compare two of the three sides. So SIN theta is actually pronounced sine theta. We just abbreviate with those three letters. So sine from theta is just the comparison of the opposite side to the length of the hypotenuse. So this fraction answer matches the same as the sine of the angle measure. Cosine is the second one, and it's abbreviated COS, compares the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Tan is short for tangent. And that's a comparison of the opposite side to the adjacent side. You may remember the phrase SOHCAHTOA as a mnemonic device to remember those three definitions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. These are the three most common definitions, but there are other formulas or are other definitions as well. CSC stands for co-secant, and it's the reciprocal of sine, hypotenuse divided by the length of the opposite side. SEC is called secant, and it's the reciprocal of cosine, hypotenuse over the adjacent side. COT is cotangent. And that's the reciprocal of tangent, adjacent over opposite. You can use all six of these definitions to compare two of three sides in any right triangle. For the two examples at the bottom of this page, we're going to utilize Pythagorean theorem as a way to help us find trig definitions. It says if sine theta equals 4 fifths, determine the other five trig functions of theta. If we know a sine or a trig definition, we're going to start off by drawing a right triangle. And we'll keep that same pattern as the triangle picture up above. Like so. But instead of marking A, B, and C, I'm going to pick one of my smaller acute angles and call it theta. Now, on the definition, it says sine theta equals 4 over 5. 4 is the length of the opposite side, and 5 stands for the length of the hypotenuse. That means I'm going to label my picture directly across my theta as 4, and the hypotenuse we know is across the right angle. Now, in order to find all of our trig definitions, we need the length of the missing side, or the adjacent side. I'm going to call that A and apply Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B are the two side lengths that form the right angle. I'm going to leave A and have B equal my 4. The hypotenuse is 5. I'll square that on the right. If I simplify, a squared plus 16 is equal to 25. Move that 16 over so that we can get a squared by itself, and we get 9. Taking the square root, the nice thing about this one is we get a perfect square, a equals 3. Once you know all three sides, I'm going to go ahead and label that on my triangle. We can list the other five trig definitions. We know sine, so we're going to want to define cosine of theta, tangent of theta, and then the three reciprocals. The reciprocal for sine is cosecant, CSC. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal for tangent is cotangent. We just use those definitions up above. Cosine, by definition, is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side length is that lowercase a, 
This would be 3 out of 5, or 3 fifths. Tangent compares opposite to adjacent. That would be 4 over 3. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, or hypotenuse, over opposite, and that's 5 over 4. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, 5 over 3. Last but not least, the cotangent reference compares adjacent over opposite, and that's going to be 3 over 4. That's listing out the other five trig definitions if you know a given one. We have one more in this part of the video. If secant theta equals 6, determine the other five trig functions of theta. Now if it's not written as a fraction, let's put it in fraction form simply by writing it over 1. We'll go ahead and draw our triangle, keeping that pattern very similar to the one we have up above, putting my right angle in the corner, and then marking my theta on the inside corner on that left side. So if secant is 6 over 1, by definition, the 6 represents the hypotenuse, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so the 1 would represent the adjacent side. 6 is the hypotenuse, I'll put it there. 1 would be adjacent, that's what connects it to the right angle, I'll put that down at the bottom. This time we're missing the length of the opposite side, so I'll call that b. If we apply a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that would be 1 squared plus b squared equals 6 squared. 1 squared is 1, and 6 squared is 36. We'll move 1 over, and we get b squared equals 35. Take the square root of each side, and b equals the square root of 35. We're actually going to keep this exact, and that way our trig definitions will be in exact form as well. So we're not going to approximate this one. We'll write just square root 35. Can you list out all six trig functions of theta? Just list the definitions and see if you can apply the appropriate side lengths. Once you're done, press play and we'll see if we have a match. Let's take a look at what you have. I got sine theta equals square root 35 over 6. Cosine is just the reciprocal of secant, which is 1 over 6. That was easy. Tangent simplified to square root 35. Cosecant is the reciprocal and cotangent is the reciprocal. But when we have a square root in the denominator, this might be something that you recall or don't recall from geometry. We'll see. When you have a square root in the denominator, you want to rationalize it, which means we multiply by square root 35 over square root 35. What that does on the bottom, when you multiply two square roots together, it cancels the square root out to equal plane 35. We want a simplified fraction to not have that square root in the denominator. In the numerator, since 6 is on the outside and square root 35 is on the inside, we simply leave it as that product. Applying that rule for cotangent will allow us to simplify that fraction as well. Again, the denominator is just going to equal 35. And in the numerator, 1 plus square root 35 is square root 35. There are the six trigonometric functions of theta. So this is the part one lesson for 13.1. Take a break and kind of stretch out a little bit and then go ahead and watch the 13.1 part two video to finish the lesson for today.